Welcome to workflow and image storage, which is sounds like a horrific topic to me, but, but it's very important. Uh, over the years, I've used many systems to manage my digital images. And what we're mainly going to talk about today is what I'm doing now, since that's working great for me. There are lots of different ways to do digital asset management, or otherwise known as DAM. They call it DAM for a reason, not just digital asset management. Uh, the system I'm using now is pretty simple, pretty expensive, inexpensive, and, uh, and, and is working well for me. So you may have an alternative setup that you're using at the end. I'm going to ask for input from others on what they're using that, that varies from mine and how, that, how, how it's working for you, what might you see that works better than what I'm doing, or whatever. Uh, currently, I use two different computers. I have a, an iMac that is in my gallery, that is my main computer, it, it uh, has the beautiful screen, uh, and, and uh, since I travel extensively, I have a MacBook Pro that I use while I'm on the road. So I need to have access to almost all of my photos at all times. So I had to create a workflow that accommodates my needs, which makes sense, right? And my number one goal is to have at least two copies of every image as soon as possible. Uh, so when I'm, when I'm shooting, the first thing that I'm, when I, when I get done is I need to get copies onto a computer. And so here's a, a basic outline of my workflow. So immediately, well, as soon as I can, I ingest everything from the card that I take out of the camera to an external hard drive and I'm doing this through Lightroom, and we'll talk more about details in a, in a minute. Uh, immediately, backup starts. Then I keyword everything. I pick the best, delete the worst, develop the best, export them as needed, delete the exports, and then reuse and reformat the SD card. So, my, like I said, my goal is to have at least two copies of those photos at all times. And I prefer ingesting everything into the computer and deleting them out of Lightroom because I can have a larger view of them and make sure that I'm not deleting something that I don't want to delete. Uh, even if it's, you know, if it's uh, just a, you know, horribly five-stop underexposed black picture, I want to look at it in Lightroom. And so I, I dump everything into Lightroom. Sometimes it's a big download, you know, could be a thousand photos if I'm out shooting hard for a day. It's going to take a while. I load it up, go have lunch, whatever, come back and, and uh, start working on the photos or work on them whenever. I don't have to work on them right away because I have a backup that starts right away and starts backing up those photos. Now, when you work in Lightroom, there is the capability to automatically, when you import, to make a copy of those photos to an, a second hard drive. Uh, I don't do that because that backs up all the bad shots and I take a lot of bad shots and I delete them right away because no reason to have bad photos laying around. So I don't, I don't use that feature in Lightroom to back those up right away, uh, to do a, a double backup. Um, I prefer to get them into Lightroom, and the first thing I do when I'm in Lightroom, and, and we'll talk about this more in a minute, is uh, decide which ones are good, which ones are bad, and, and, and rip it up. So uh, right away, my backup starts. We'll talk about how in a few minutes. Um, and then I am applying keywords, both when I ingest and then as soon as the photos get into, uh, into Lightroom. Keywords are the only, no, are, the, are by far the best way to find your photos. And so uh, we're gonna talk extensively about keywording in a minute, but uh, I need to get keywords on those photos right away uh, because if I don't, I might not ever find the photos again. Uh, I would, but it, it would be, it would take hunting and searching and nothing makes me matter than to spend time looking for something. I hate looking for things, you know, when I can't find my shoe, I, you know, I'm going nuts. Uh, when I can't find a photo, it's just a waste of time. So, so, so Lauren, immediate, yes. immediately at, at import, that's when you keyword. 
We'll talk about that more in a minute. Yes, but yes. So when I, when I, after I've done keywording, and like I say, we're, we're you know, the order of this is a little weird. Um, I go through and I, I, I pick the best photos and in Lightroom, uh, you can just put a white flag on the best. And uh, so I'll, I'll white flag the best ones. I'll not do anything to the decent ones and the worst ones I'm putting a black flag on, setting them to be rejected and deleting them from the catalog and off of my hard drive right away. Get rid of them. If they're, you know, if they stink, if they're horribly underexposed, they're way out of focus, whatever, there's nothing that's ever gonna bring them back to health <laughs> again. Uh, I used to, when I shot slide film and, and spent a lot of money on film and processing, I kept every slide, no matter how bad. And I had file cabinets full of slides. And I hoped that them sitting in the dark, something would grow on them that made the photos better. Never did. Same thing with digital. When I first started out, I kept all my digital files. Thought, well, someday they'll get better or I'll be able to fix them. Nope, if they're way out of focus, you know, whatever. Just a bad shot, bad composition does not get better the longer it sits on a hard drive. So I'm getting rid of it, it's gone. I don't, I've got, you know, too many photos in there already. <laughs> don't need bad ones. Um, so I develop the, the best ones and then uh, do my processing and, and whatever I need to do that photo, depending on what I'm going to do with it. And, and processing a photo it differs if you're just gonna put it up on the internet put it on your blog, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, or if you're gonna make a print. If I'm, if I'm making a quality print, I'm working on that baby a, a lot harder than I am just putting it up on the web. So I'm gonna do my, all my development, get all that done, and then I probably won't do anything else to those files until I know what I'm doing with it. So I'm not gonna export it right away unless I know you know, that I'm going to put it on my blog or whatever I'm doing with it. I'm just gonna let it, let it sit until I need it. Then I will export it as needed. So if I need to put one on my blog, I export it the size and, and the settings I need for my blog. If I'm gonna send it to somebody else, uh, I'll, I'll export it in whatever sizes I need. Um, as, as uh, you know, whatever the whatever I need it for. If I'm, I'm going to print it, then I, if I'm sending it to a lab, then I'll export it, whatever size I need to send to that lab, and uh, all those go into uh, a, a folder. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. As soon as that export has been used for whatever its purpose was, I delete it from my computer. It's gone. I don't need it anymore. I've already sent it to the lab. I don't need it sitting on my computer as an export anymore. Uh, because it's no longer in my catalog and I don't want multiple photos, multiple copies of the same photo sitting in different locations on my computer or in my catalog. There, I, there is no reason for me to have a version of a photo uh, that looks exactly the same that I output uh, 910 pixels wide for the blog. I output it to be printed at uh, 12 inches wide I don't need multiple copies of that because it is so easy and fast to export again out of Lightroom that I don't want to have all those copies laying around and trying to figure out, oh, what the hell, what was that one for? Just get rid of it. When I need, need it again, I'll export it again. And uh, that way I don't fill up hard drives with multiple copies of photos. I can just get in there and export it again quicker than I can find it and figure out what size I had the other one. So. As soon as that export is done, it is deleted and gone. The original is still working with Lightroom, so I don't have, I'm not getting rid of the original. I'm getting rid of that exported copy that I, I made out of Lightroom. Then when I'm back out shooting, I reuse and I reformat my SD cards in the camera. Some people use, some people hang on to their SD cards and use that as a backup. That is the most expensive way there is to back up things. It's better than nothing, you know, I'll, I'll give you that. But it's it's you know it's the most expensive. You have no idea what's on the cards, even if you write you know where you shot something. You don't know what's on the card. Um, you know I, I know people who have bags full of, of cards they pulled out of their cameras, and it's like oh my god, you know, you know you got thousand dollars worth of cards sitting there. Um, 
So I reformat it in the camera. I don't want to reformat it in the computer. The, com the camera does a better job. You can mess it up when you redo it in the computer. So, um, and I have all of my photos in one Lightroom catalog. I don't want multiple catalogs either. Lightroom will hold millions of photos. I have 86,000 plus in mine. Um, and and that's, uh, that's where we're going, so. Um, Lauren, at any point in this process, are you creating virtual copies of the ones that your uh, your best photos, the ones you're editing? No, not unless not unless there's variations of it. If I have a color variation on a black and white, then I'd have a virtual copy of it. Uh, if I had uh, 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 you know some other variation, uh, I tried one, made it a lot lighter. Then I tried another one, I might have a virtual copy of it. But uh, just because I'm exporting one for the web and one for printing, no, I would I would never make virtual copies for that. Uh, I mean, I might, I would for web and for printing. If I if I toned it different to be printed than I toned it for the web, then yes, I would have a virtual copy. But if I if I had a you know, I, I resize my photos when I export them for the web to be exactly the size needed on whatever it's being used at. So my blog is 910 pixels wide is the biggest photo I can have. So I export all my photos at 910 pixels. Uh, Facebook is, uh, I forget what the number is right off the top of my head, but I have a, a, a preset set up. So I output exactly the size for Facebook. Uh, Meetup is 1200 pixels. So if I had a copy for Facebook, a copy for my blog and a copy for Meetup, uh, I would not have virtual copies of those. They would just be new exports. Uh, and, and I could export, if I was going to export that same photo for all three of those, all three of those at once, it's very easy to do that in Lightroom and you just click it and you, you click three boxes and hit export if you've set up uh, export presets and boom, it goes to wherever you want it to go and, and you're all set. So, okay. Um, so, Lauren, Lauren? I, I have a question. Yes. Susan, hi. Um, so you have, you've brought your photos in, you import, a, let's say you import a photo, you do your keyword, you've chosen it to be the best, you develop it. Now that developed photo, you want to export it, but you don't, you say you delete the export, but where's all the, where's the photo where you've done all the work, the developing, does that stay developed? So in, in Lightroom, and this is only Lightroom, Lightroom doesn't, doesn't change your original file. What, when you import into Lightroom, which is a misnomer, you are, Lightroom is creating a preview copy of your original photo. And everything that you see in Lightroom is changes being made to that preview copy. And it creates what they call a sidecar uh, text file. So when you go to export, it then looks at that sidecar ex, uh, text file and says, okay, apply all these changes to that original photo and then make a, a new copy of that photo, full size or whatever size you tell it. So the preview that you're seeing in Lightroom you, it is, is essentially virtual. You can only see it in Lightroom. So it hasn't adjusted your original file at all. So when you make that export, you've not touched your original. So if you open your original after you make changes in Lightroom, it'll look like it did when it came out of the camera. So. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things of Lightroom, which gives you uh, unlimited history of everything you've ever done to it. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll, let's let's move on. So, very important to me is finding have is being able to quickly find my photos, uh, and I use Lightroom for that. Um, so, you know, mainly we're going to talk about Lightroom today, and the reason is it started out as a database program, completely made to organize things. And then they added the ability to develop and, and uh, all the other things uh, after that. Uh, it also connects directly to Photoshop, so you can transfer back and forth to Photoshop really, really easy, and it's great for printing. There are other cataloging programs out there. Um, uh, Bridge, Adobe Bridge, Photo Mechanic is uh, a, a great cataloging ca um, uh, software on one. Uh, Paint Shop Pro, Apple Photos, ACDC. Uh, Photo Mechanic and Bridge don't let you do any develop adjustments. They, they are just purely cataloging. Uh, Photo Mechanic is probably the best pure catalog uh, software. Um, 
but you you have to then uh, export to something else to to do it. So if you're only using Photoshop, for instance, a yeah, photo mechanic might be a great way to go if you're really doing some some heavy duty editing uh, of of keywords and things like that. Uh, but mainly we're going to talk about uh, Lightroom today, and but the concepts are the same no matter what database you're using. There's lots of them out there. On the right, you can see that I I started by date, and when I when I imported my photos, I did them by date. In about 2013, I realized this, this is crazy because I can't remember what I had for lunch. I'm sure not gonna remember when I shot a picture uh, you know, a, a month ago or a year ago. And if I wanted to find all of my pictures of lighthouses or waterfalls or whatever, I would have to know where they all are. You know, what, what date, what month, when, when did I shoot a lighthouse? So uh, that didn't work. So I went to, uh, subject based. And so, uh, you know, that, that is better, but it's not great because, you know, here I have pictures of, uh, trees that I shot at night with the stars. So do I put those in a folder for trees? Do I put them in a folder for Vermont? Do I put them in a folder for astrophotography? You know, so the reality is I don't care where they are. Um, for the most part, uh, but the database has to know where they are. And so once they are cataloged by whatever program it is, you can't move it without telling the program, the catalog, where the files are now. If you move them, it won't know where they are. So uh, I don't care because I'm using keywords extensively. And I'm, if I'm looking for trees with stars, I'm gonna type in trees and stars into my database and it's gonna bring up all my trees and stars photos. Um, you know, so the more, the more keywords, the better. And we're gonna talk about this more. So if you rely on your folder structure to find your photos, you're doing the work of the computer and you're not letting the computer do the work. So you really don't wanna just have a bunch of folders with by subject and use that as a way to find your photos. You're, Could you uh, show us like, I mean, maybe later, like for example, so you wanna find, you have all these dates now, but you want to find the, the trees with the stars. So what would you type in to find all the trees with the stars? For we'll, we'll get into that. Yep. We'll, we'll get into that. So, so the, another question? Yes. Okay. So my Lightroom, I don't see anything on the side, any kind of, what do I have to click on? Library or well, develop or? Right. Right now, you're seeing a screenshot of the uh, import screen. Oh, right when you import it. Okay, got gotcha. Yeah, so this is the import screen. Yes. All right, thank you. So when I'm, when I'm importing, if I have multiple subjects, like a lamp, a clock, a flashlight, uh, I'm going to add keywords. I, you know, I add keywords when I import. So... I add whatever keywords cover all the photos that I'm importing. In this case, when I have a lamp, a flashlight, and a clock, there probably aren't any keywords other than location where I shot them, which doesn't matter, you know, uh, that cover that. So I'm going to keyword them after I import them and not when I ingest. And so most programs will let you batch keyword groups of photos. So you can, I can just select the clock photos and keyword those. And then I can select the whole group of flashlight photos and keyword those. Yeah. Um, when you're first starting out, of when you're first starting out keywording, you don't know what to keyword, right? So I mean, I I tend to keyword the bejesus out of things if I can. But if you need some help, there is the keyword list project, which which has suggested groups of keywords for you to start with. And so if you go there, uh, they have a, a, a beginner set, they have some specialized sets of keywords that help you figure what you might keyword a, a, a photo to, or to a photo. So uh, I, I went out and shot uh, some uh, star trails and uh, and because of my exquisite planning, uh, the International Space Station flew right over Polaris. 
okay, it was it was pure stupid dumb luck that the space station went right there. But uh, <laughs> well, I like to claim things like that. But uh, I didn't even know it was coming by that night. Um, so anyway, you know, lots of different keywords I'm going to add to this photo. So uh, for instance, I'm going to put in where I shot it, which was Bridgewater, Vermont. What what's in the photo? So there's trees, there's reflection, there's silhouette, there's sky, there's star trails, there's stars. I I put in what type of uh, what type of uh, camera trickery <laughs> might be time lapse, long exposure. I uh, used light painting on this one. Uh, you know, grass. There's green grass. So anything that I think that I might ever want to use, that I might ever type in to find this photo again. Okay, and the the more stuff you put in, the the better. In Lightroom, when once you build up a a uh, some keywords, they automatically start coming in when you start typing. So if I type AST, astrophotography is going to pop up right away for me already. And you have you end up with a list of keyword uh, keywords that you've used before. So hopefully on the right there, you can see a keyword list, and that's going to have all the keywords that I've ever used, and it tells me how many times. And if I want to find photos quickly by those specific keywords. I can just scroll down and click that and it'll bring up all the photos. Uh, what I'm normally doing though is I'm using the, the grid mode uh, in the library, using the grid and uh, doing a search for whatever, ISS, Astro, stars, and on a Mac I'm hitting Command F to find. On Windows it's Control F and that brings up the search box and just type in whatever words I'm looking for and then it will Boom, those photos are there. So if I want to find all of my photos of star trails, boom, right away. And since I've gone through them and selected the best ones as a pick and put a white flag on them, I can sort by pick. So now that now I search uh, uh, star trails, all my star trails come up and I'm sorting by pick. So my best star trail pictures are at the top. So within three seconds, I have all of my star trail pictures that I want to look at. You know, if, I'm, if I want to export or print, I, I can just do it from right there. Uh, there's a question online, why not just make collections? Because collections are just like using folders. So I do, I do make a lot of collections, but I don't want to have thousands of collections because then I have to manually go through all the collections and find things based by, again, subject probably. So again, this photo, would I put it, you know, the, the beautiful thing about collections, though, is you can put a photo in more than one collection. So I could have an astro photo collection. I could have an ISS collection. I could have a long exposure collection, uh, a, a reflection collection. Yeah, I like saying that. And put the same photo in multiple collections, and it doesn't take up any more space on my hard drive, essentially. Lauren, can I ask uh, a question about the difference between ingest and import? Same thing. So, it, well, in, yes, no, it's not the same thing. If you're not using Lightroom, when you, when you copy photos from your card to your computer, technically you're ingesting it, same, same terminology. So you can, you can ingest photos to your computer or copy them from your card to your computer and not bring them into Lightroom. So when you import into Lightroom, you can do both the ingest, bringing the, card, the photo off the card to the computer and adding it to the Lightroom catalog at the same time. You can do that as two steps or you can do it as one step. I always do it as one step. Why well, do two steps when I do one? So it, it is a different thing, but kind of the same. That makes sense? Okay, good. So I don't, I don't wanna have thousands of collections. You know, I, I have maybe 30 or 40. So I, I do have an astrophotography collection. That way I can very quickly, one click, find all my favorite astrophotography uh, photos. But it's, it's, you know, because then I don't have to spell astrophotography. I don't have to type that out, however long that takes, you know, not a big deal, right? So no matter what program you're using, I, keywords are the, are the way to, to find things. And if, you're, if, you're, if you've had multiple catalogs and you keyworded in one and another, you can, you can import the, the other catalog into 
your main one and all of that info will come with it. And a little bit later, I'll talk about how I travel and, and how that works when I'm traveling. Okay. Um, so I had a client, I don't know if she's online, I don't know. Uh, so I'm not gonna mention her by name, who had about 40,000 pictures, maybe it's 30,000 pictures in her Lightroom and had zero keywords. And she said, you know, she was one of my mentoring clients and, and she wanted me to help her organize. And I said, how do you find your photos? Well, I just kind of try to remember when I shot them. It's like, wow, that hurts. So, uh, so I said, you have to keyword them all. And she kind of looked at me like, what do you mean? I said, the only way you're going to find your photos is to keyword them. So she sat on her couch with uh, her laptop every night as her husband watched TV, you know, she probably didn't care what he was watching anyway, and, and keyworded. In about two weeks, she had all of her photos keyworded. And, and now she just, boom, here's, boom, she found, you know, everything's organized. It's, it's just so, so easy to do. And since you can batch keyword, you know, if you had a hundred photos of, of uh, uh, your kid playing in the backyard, you can just add, you know, however many keywords you want to, to all 100 photos at one time. So it's, 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 it's the way to go. It is just the way to go. Now there are uh, tons of discussions out in the world of, of how extensive your keyword and how many synonyms you put in and, and you know, all of that. And there's, there are uh, 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 scientists who spend their entire lives working on this. And I don't know if Gil is online, but one of, one of the Hi. guys that I, Gil's here, Gil was a, this is what Gil did for a living, <laughs> right, Gil? And, yes. and so, you know, there's a, a lot you can get into, but I don't think you need to be that crazy about it. Um, it's basically just comes down to what's in the picture and what would you think you're going to be searching for in the future. Now, I find that I, you know, I, I have, International Space Station and I have ISS. So I try to make sure I have things like that in both, you know, both. I might just type in ISS to find my International Space Station photos. Um, uh, night photos, long exposure, you know, those are probably words that I'm going to remember and use every time. If I'm putting in, so you notice I have stars as a plural. So I always put in plurals of whatever I'm looking, whatever I have in there. That way, if I happen to search, uh, if I search for star, stars are gonna come up. If I only have star in there and I search for stars with an S on it, I'm not gonna find the ones that are just singular. So you know, the, the best recommendation is always, always keyword with plural and search for singular. Uh, that way you make sure you, you get that. Uh, but there are, there's tons of ways to keyword. So simple question. Yeah. I say I, I keyword some uh, photos on Monday and then from another file, I keyword some on Tuesday and then some on Wednesday. So how, in other words, when I, when I type in that keyword, are they all going to come up with, uh, you know, if they're in different catalogs or in different files automatically? Not different catalogs, but different files. Yes. So it, it doesn't matter where they're stored. We're going to talk about storage here in a minute. Uh, it doesn't matter where the photos are, but if you have multiple catalogs of Lightroom, it's not going to cross over catalogs. That's why you should have all your photos in one catalog. So if you have multiple, you know, when I started out, I did multiple catalogs. I, you know, I had, I, I was doing a, a, I was doing some weddings at the time. I was doing, uh, uh, I had a pet, uh, a pet uh, dog, portrait studio, um, you know, a couple other things. So I had separate catalogs for, for pretty much everything I was doing. And then the problem was, which catalog do things go in, you know? And I realized, well, that's crazy. I'm, again, I'm doing the work of thinking rather than the computer. So I see, the thing is that goes I, into one catalog now, and it'll hold millions of photos, so I don't have to worry about that. I tend to name all my catalog just the word catalog. So that, does that mean they're all in the same catalog? Well, make sure we're talking about, you know, in, in Lightroom, the catalog is the overall th uh, thing that's hold that you see your photos in. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, you should only have one catalog. And if you have multiple ones, you, you need to name one of them 
master catalog or whatever you want to call it and import all the other catalogs into it so you have all your photos in one place. Now, when I say all your photos in one place, that's a, a, a misnomer because again, it doesn't matter where the originals are. It's, it's all the, the catalog previews in one place. Your, foot, your images, your originals can be sitting absolutely anywhere. It doesn't matter. But you want, you want the database to be knowledgeable of all of those photos in one catalog. Lauren. Yes. This is Sherry. Do you, um, does this work the same in Photoshop? No, Photoshop does not do any cataloging. Okay. All Photoshop will do is make your photos look different. So you have no way of finding them. So those catalog programs that I showed earlier. So if you have Photoshop, you have Lightroom. So if you do nothing else with Lightroom other than use it as a catalog, if you don't use the develop module, you only use Photoshop as develop module, you're okay. Uh, also, if you have Photoshop, you have uh, Bridge, Adobe's Bridge program, which is a pure uh, cataloging program. So at least you use Bridge to sort and keyword and find your photos. But Lightroom has such great develop module that a lot of times you don't need Photoshop. You can do it faster and as as good in Lightroom, a lot of things. So th that's why I use Lightroom rather than Bridge. I, I used to use Bridge extensively before Lightroom was develop module came along. Um, I, I haven't opened Bridge in a couple of years now. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Lauren. Yes. This is Nancy Love. Um, I know this this might be contrary to your sticking to um, this being Lightroom, but I don't use Lightroom to catalog. Um, I have Lightroom 6, I don't have CC, I have Bridge, I have Photo Mechanics, and I have On1. Do you have experience on how those um, four programs would interact with each other? Uh, um, uh, so, so Photo Mechanic will keep track of where your photos are, your originals as do, do the others, uh, but they, they don't talk to each other. None of them will talk to each other. So if you make a change in photo mechanic, it's not gonna transfer over to on one and the same, you know, the, the database information of, you know, say keywording or, or the location if you move the photo on your hard drive or that kind of thing. So my recommendation is decide which one you like best and stick with it and forget the others. Uh, Photo mechanic, I, I love. Uh, when when I worked at newspapers, that's what we used, and it has. I mean, it has the ability to do things like we could put in the rosters of sports teams, and and their jersey number and their name and their year of school and whatever position they played. And in photo mechanic, all we had to do is type in the school and the player's number, and it brought all that other info in for you. So you didn't have to, you know. I mean, just those crazy things like that. I don't need that anymore. You know, I don't do rosters anymore. Uh, so, uh, you know, Lightroom does everything I need to do. I can't, I haven't, you know, I, I have not, I can't remember the last time I thought, ah, oh, crap, I wish Lightroom did that on the cataloging side. There are develop side things I wish it did, but on the, on the library, I can't, it's, it's doing everything. Now, other people might have other needs that are different than mine, but I cannot think of anything, you know, if, if Adobe's called me and said, hey, Lauren, We'll give you $25,000 for a good idea for the library. I'd be like, oh, crap. <laughs> Keep your 25000 because I wouldn't be able to come up with anything other than renaming import and export, which are, uh, I've thought a lot about that, but, uh, <laughs> but it, it does everything I need, so. Lauren? Yes. Lauren, Lauren uh, where do you save your uh, catalog? We're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. Lauren? Lauren. I have a question. It's Barbara. Okay. I just okay. want to know, can you tell me what I'm looking up Lightroom because I don't have it and I'm looking at the computer and there's all there's mobile and so forth. Can you tell me what Lightroom I should get? Yes. So this is Lightroom classic. Okay, so, not premium. I see so there's two versions. There's CC and there's classic. The classic is, is based on your computer essentially. And the CC is cloud based. The classic uh, does more than the CC does. And the number one thing that classic will do that CC won't is let you print. You can't print out of CC. Uh, so that alone is a killer for me. Uh, but when you, when you purchase or rent, 
as the reality is. Uh, Lightroom, they have the photography package. They have either the classic version or the CC version. The classic version, you get uh, Photoshop, Bridge, Classic, and CC, all of them. On the, if you just get the CC version, you only get CC and a lot of uh, cloud storage from Adobe. So get the, get the Lightroom uh, Classic package, $9.95 a month. And I can just oh, do it right online. Yes. And I'll, yep. And just download and it right online. Because uh, I have five million pictures and they're all over. Yeah. It's, yeah. You can't why I'm here. spend so much time okay. looking for them. Are they going to fix the missing print functionality on CC? I don't know. It's been out three years and they haven't. So I don't. I don't know what the what the deal is there. I don't know why they haven't. I don't know. Uh, Lauren, let me make a comment uh, for the users who are just think, thinking about keyboarding. Uh, that link you put on before is a good place to look because if you ingest that whole vocabulary into Lightroom, it's available to you immediately. It has an organized structure which you can uh, look at. And the other virtue of that is that there's a what we call a parent-child relationship. So in searching, if you were uh, hypothetically searching for a, a specific term when you keyword it, you could search for the bigger terms. For instance, if, if you index birch tree and, and then uh, later on you wanted all trees, you could search tree and it would automatically pick up the birch trees as well. So, Great. Thanks, Gil. I've got a question because it really comes up in some of the computer things. Is the cloud-based one which I would generally not want, like Microsoft, that it means without an internet connection for any reason, like a third world country, you might not have it on your hard drive, whereas the Lightroom that you rent, you actually rent it, but it's on your hard drive once you download it? Yes, it is on your hard drive. Great, thank you. Yes, so you don't have to be connected to see it, but you have to be connected to do anything. And if you, the CC version, you might not be able to see all your photos, depends what's sitting there. Warren? Yes. Hi, this is Matthew. Hi. Um, files that you could put in a catalog. I was laughing when you said you had 80,000 because I'm not that far behind. I have about 65,000 things cataloged. So uh, is there any limit uh, to how many items you can catalog? And that, of course, also includes virtual copies. Well, virtual copies don't, don't, don't take up any space and it's not a problem. They say millions. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing there's a, a limit, but you know, I'm not gonna get there. Uh, Have you ever heard of anybody getting like topped out or whatever? No. If anybody's token around with a million photos in Lightroom, you know, that's crazy. <laughs> hey, thank you. Okay, let's talk about storage for a minute. So. Uh, I store all of my photos on a four terabyte external hard drive. My whole life's work is on one four terabyte hard drive. It has about, I have over 86,000 photos on that hard drive. Uh, and it is a portable hard drive. And it also contains my Lightroom catalog. And so when I am on the road or wherever, I have, I have that hard drive with me. Um, when I export photos, I export them to Dropbox. That way I can access them from any computer, okay? So my four terabyte external little hard drive is just a regular cheap ass hard drive that will probably last me a year and a half <laughs> and it's either gonna die or I'll outgrow it. So uh, I, 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 I buy the, the cheap ones, they last long enough because I am backing them up like crazy. So I have an, ex, an eight terabyte external hard drive at my gallery in New Jersey. I have a four terabyte external hard drive at my home in New Jersey. I have another four terabyte here in Vermont and a two terabyte that I uh, use on the road. So I use Apple's time machine to, to constantly back up my main iMac computer to my eight terabyte hard drive. Um, Unfortunately, Windows 10 doesn't have a com comparable software included with it. You, there's plenty of ones out there that are free that are okay, uh, but uh, uh, nothing, nothing that comes with Windows. So uh, unfortunately, they've eliminated that. Um, I, use, I then use Time Machine at home with my laptop to back up my portable external four terabyte drive to my at home hard drive, okay? So the, the uh, 
uh, Time Machine will automatically do that. So that's doing it all day long. So as soon as I make a change on my computer, it's backed up. Um, in Vermont, I have to do manual backups because I can't use the automated software. I could buy some more software to do it, but it's just as easy to just do a complete uh, copy uh, uh, and paste or just drag and drop is what I'm trying to say. A drag and drop from one hard drive to another before I go to bed when I get up in the morning, it's all, it's all backed up. When I'm traveling, I usually bring that my main four terabyte hard drive with me. And then when I shoot more photos, I upload them to that, you know, I copy them off my card to that four terabyte external hard drive. And then as on the road, I carry this two terabyte portable hard drive to back up my new photos. So again, I wanna make sure I have at least two copies of my photos at all times. If I'm traveling, I don't reformat my SD cards until I get home, uh, just in case there's some weird electromagnetic thing happening and it wipes my drives. Uh, I don't know, it probably would wipe my card at the same time, but, but uh, you know, I, I just wanna make sure they're in, they're in separate places. Um, so uh, uh, so I, I do all of that uh, to my, my hard drives. Um, so Lauren. Yes. So that primary four terabyte, that external drive, that, that really only has originals on it, right? Uh, yes, but that's all I ever have. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's all I ever have. I don't, I don't, I, if I export something out of Lightroom, as soon as I use it, I delete it. Because Sorry? it's, yes. Okay, well I was alluding to earlier, so your catalog is on each one of these external hard drives? No, my catalog is on my four terabyte hard drive. Okay. So on my external one that has all my photos. So that way, mean, whenever I plug that, whatever computer I plug that hard drive into, I have access to my catalog and all my photos. So if you have electromagnetic pulse and it blows away out that hard drive, you're screwed. No, I'm backed up like crazy. But your, <laughs> car, your, your catalog isn't. Yes, it is. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm after. That's the part I'm after. That's, that's what the next dot is, cloud okay. backup. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, not only do I have hard drive backups, I'm using the cloud to back things up. So like I said, when I, when I export photos, I export them to Dropbox. Um, and you know, I have a, a terabyte of, of Dropbox. Uh, well, let me, let me back up a step. Somebody said, what's my opinion on RAID backup? RAID is the, is the ability to have multiple hard drives and it automatically uh, backs things up and, and moves things around and, and it, it's the best way to go. It costs a lot more money. So uh, if, if I only sat in one place ever, I would have a RAID drive system to back everything up. But since I'm, I'm on the road and moving and all the time going, uh, you know, I, I, I can't take my RAID with me. So it, it, you know, it is the ultimate way to go. Costs more money. My simple way works. If, if a drive, you know, if a drive goes down, which they do all the time, I just bring another, buy another drive and copy over from, from uh, one of the other drives. Oh, uh, Lauren, I'm going to have to disagree with you slightly on RAID. RAID is, is for redundancy and, and, uh, you know, if one drive fails, hopefully the other ones will take it up, but a whole RAID box could fail and you still could be having a problem. So you do need to back up a RAID box. <laughs> there you go, right, <laughs> right. Depending on how many drives you have in the RAID, right. Well, they so, could fail multiple, multiple failures. I'm sure, <laughs> I know you've seen it all. Uh, so I, I, I back up my catalog to Dropbox routinely. So uh, Lightroom will do an automatic backup of your, of your catalog if you want every time you quit. So I have it do that and that backup goes to my Dropbox. That way if everything else explodes, my, my, I have my catalog backup up in Dropbox. Um, Amazon Prime, if you're a Prime member, you have unlimited space on Amazon Prime to put your photos. Um, AWS is uh, Amazon's web service. Uh, they host, I don't know what the percentage is, 60 to 70% of everything on the internet is hosted by Amazon. It's amazing who's on Amazon. Uh, it's including, secure. Including the U.S. government and the CIA, for example. And, and Adobe. If you're using Adobe uh, CC, all your Adobe stuff's on Amazon. 
Um, right, so it ain't, you know, it's secure. Um, Google Drive is another way to back up. The problem with these three is there's no automation. It's not doing it automatically. You have to manually back things up. So I use a, a, a service called Backblaze, um, and it's uh, uh, backblaze.com, and it has uh, unlimited amount of storage, and it does constant backups. So it's it's constantly, as anytime I make a change on my computer, it's backing it up. Cost me five bucks a month. I can afford that, hopefully for another couple months. Um, but if I want to, if I want to download specific individual files, I can do that. And so if if uh, something got corrupted, I can go back and find the individual files. The bad thing about Backblaze is if you delete a file and the backups keep backing it up and notice that that one's missing, after 30 days, it deletes that deleted one off the, off the backup. If you've only made changes to a file, it doesn't purge it, but deleted files are purged after 30 days. <laughs> Now, um, uh, you know, this is my last resort backup. So when, you know, when, when my house burns down and my gallery blows up and, and a blizzard has cleared off my house in Vermont, then I go to Backblaze. <laughs> so uh, this deleted file thing is only a problem after I've lost four other hard drives in three different locations. So it's not a big deal for me. Um, if I need to do a full restore, rather than downloading uh, all of my files, they will put them on a hard drive and ship me the hard drive so I can just plug that in oh, and, and go. The, the other problem with Backblaze is the initial upload can be pretty slow. It took me almost two months to upload my photos initially because my upload speed at my gallery isn't very fast. So it can take a while to upload right away. But, Lauren, uh, have you looked at Carbonite? Because I have this exactly the same, including the 30-day thing. It costs a bit more. It's in Portland. But they actually saved me once and FedExed me an overnight with all the pictures on it. Yeah, there's, there's lots of other ones. This is, uh, you know, I, I know these guys are good. I've, I've heard about Carbonite, that they're good. Costs a little bit more. I'm a cheap bastard. Uh, uh, I figure I'm never going to use this because I, I, I'm redundant four times before I get to these guys. So uh, hopefully this will do it. So there are lots of other other ways out there. Yes. Lauren, when you're Lauren, getting oh. out of um, Lightroom, it asks you if you want to back up your files. If you click yes, where is it backing your files up to and how do you know? If you go into the catalog preferences, it'll tell you. It's, it's whatever, whatever you told it. So the default will be the same place that your catalog is, is where your backup is, is, and that is not the place you want it to be. You don't want it to be the same place as your, as your main catalog. You want that backup someplace, some other hard drive. If your hard drive dies with your backup and your main catalog on it, you're out of business. So you, you have to back up that catalog elsewhere. Or if you, at least if, you, if you're not backing up your cat, if you're not backing up your main hard drive, if you're backing up your main hard drive four times, it, doesn't matter, I guess. Where, where did you where did you say that is found to change the location for the backup? Catalog preferences. Thank you. And Lauren, I just have a question. You, did you say Amazon Prime? Their storage is unlimited. Yes. Wow. Free. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. They got so much room. They don't care. I have a comment on that. I, I use Backblaze as well for my cloud backup. It's my understanding that um, Amazon, through Amazon Prime, that they will only allow you to upload JPEGs. They, um, when I first looked into this, they were um, not allowing you to upload RAWs. I don't know if that's changed, but that was the case when I was deciding which way to go. Uh, that must have changed. I mean, I haven't looked at it for a couple of years, so that must have changed because the I, I played with it at first and, and put up everything, so. Okay, so I, do, I don't think it's unlimited anymore. I think it used to be, but I don't think it is now. Yeah, those cheap bastards. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's not a, it's, uh, somebody just said they upload raw, so. Look into I it. I upload mean, raw too, and it also allows some video, I think up to five gigs of video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or one thing I've heard about the catalog, some say, suggest you should be running your catalog on your computer 
and uh, using your uh, external hard disk as a backup of the catalog you can get faster processing when you're running the catalog on your computer could be i i, I mean how, how much faster you know how, is is the bus inside the computer that much faster than the the bus going out to your external hard drive i don't know i, I mean that, i think that depends on your computer setup but uh, it could be and, and how significant difference is that speed? I don't know. Uh, Lauren, if I have backup on Seagate, so everything is all photos are backed up on Seagate that's from the hard drive, is that enough for backup? Is that a separate hard drive than where your, your original photos are? Well, my original photos are in my computer and this is attached to the computer as a then, backup. Then, then you're in pretty good shape, yes. So yeah, do I need at least to? have one copy. Uh, okay. I mean, the problem is if it's at your house and your house burns down, you know, is the first thing you grab is your external hard drive with your photos or your computer. So, you know, that's, that's why mobile, you know, anybody in computer security says you got to have off site backup. Well, and that's so, why I need the cloud. And the cloud would be a great way to do that for five bucks a month. I mean, how do you get any cheaper than that? Okay. So I just wanted to real quickly talk about the workflow when I travel. So I have my, my Lightroom catalog is on my main four terabyte hard drive. Uh, and I, I back up the catalog before I go on a trip to make sure I have the latest version on Dropbox. That way if I, my hard drive drops, I still can access my catalog. Each day I shoot, I ingest my photos or copy my photos to my main two byte or four terabyte hard drive again through Lightroom. And uh, then I immediately do a backup to a, a second uh, two terabyte hard drive. And then when I'm traveling, I don't reuse or reformat, oops, I should say reformat, not reform my SD cards uh, until I get home. Uh, just like I said, in case something stupid happens, uh, you know, I carry enough cards that uh, I'm gonna get through everything. Uh, I, I modify this occasionally. I just, I was in Cuba in March and I thought it might not be wise to take my, my main hard drive with me. Uh, who knows what they'll do there. And I knew I wouldn't have a good internet connection, so I wouldn't be able to do, you know, if I needed to send a photo to a lab to print, I wouldn't be able to do that from there. So I just took along two terabyte, two two terabyte hard drives and created a new catalog for Cuba and, and processed my photos while I was in Cuba in that catalog. When I got home, I imported that catalog back into my main catalog, which brought over all of my develop adjustments, all my keywords, all of everything that I did. And so now everything is back in my main catalog and I deleted that Cuba catalog once I had my, uh, once I had my backup going. Um, so uh, that is my that is my workflow. Um, I, I know there's lots of other ways to do it, and um, uh, some some might be better. I, I know there are better ways. I know there are more secure ways than what I'm doing. Um, uh, but uh, I think uh, you know I don't lose sleep <laughs> wondering what's going to happen if my house burns down, uh, or you know other than. Can I get out alive? But uh, photo, photo wise, I don't worry about that. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, I, I think it's a, a pretty good workflow. I've, I've, I've tweaked it over the years, and and uh, it, it's Lawrence? going. Any questions? Lawrence Mark. Yeah, Lawrence yeah. Mark. Um, what exactly do you have on Dropbox then? I have a backup of my catalog, my Lightroom catalog. So. I, right. I have, so I have, so I constantly back up use, using the Lightroom catalog backing up system built into Lightroom to back it up to, to uh, Dropbox. Okay. Before I go on a trip, I, I physically make a copy of my catalog and put it up there too, because the backup one is a poor version and you, it takes a little bit of work to open it up. So I do have a copy of my main Lightroom catalog sitting there, but it is not always up to date. So I don't wanna, and, and I don't want to, 
I don't want to have my main Lightroom catalog uh, that I'm working from on Dropbox because if I'm traveling, uh, there, it, I could I could uh, be working on I, it, it could it could easily not transfer what I'm do, uh, what I've done in one place to another place or something like that. So I'm better off having it on my. Uh, be, Right. I understand. So if I had, if I left my catalog open on one computer and I, at my gallery and I went home and I worked on it on my laptop at home, the changes can, can get screwed up if I don't, if I'm not careful and close it. So if, as long as, if I have it on my external hard drive, I can't accidentally uh, work on it from two different machines at the same time and screw it up. So your so Dropbox only has a catalog. It doesn't have any pictures, just the catalogs. The only pictures I put there are what I export. So if I'm exporting pictures for my blog, I export them to a okay. folder on my Dropbox that says wow. blog photos. That way, when I go home and if I'm working on my blog from home, I have access to those photos that I've exported. I don't have to re-export them. And then you get like rid of them once you're done. I them off of, off of Dropbox. Right. And then you get, then since you're exporting and you get rid of your exports, that's how you keep that clean in Dropbox. Exactly. Okay. And then you, so it has the catalog, backup catalog with Dropbox and then anything you export. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You bet. Sorry. Can I just, uh, I just want to make sure I understood what you just said. So if you keep your catalog on Dropbox or some other cloud based thing, then you can use the same catalog on different computers. Yes. That is really good to know. <laughs> and you can do that if you have it on an external hard drive. Yeah, if the hard drive is accessible by multiple computers. Exactly. Yeah. But that's why I carry, okay. I carry that hard drive with me, so I have it plugged into my desktop computer. Then when I and else out of my, uh, not at my gallery, I have that external hard drive, which has my drive, my uh, catalog that I can plug into my laptop, or if I go to somebody else's place and I want to plug it into, their computer, I, I can do that too. So when you're working on the, so if you download your your photos to one computer and then your catalog is on the cloud somewhere, you can actually see the photos that you downloaded on the other computer from your other, from a desktop or a laptop or whatever you're not, you didn't download them to? Sorry, I'm not being clear. Yes, yes, so yes, kinda. You can see <laughs> them in Lightroom. You'll see the previews that Lightroom has made you cannot make uh, develop changes if you don't have the, the wherever they are uh, uh, plugged into whatever computer you're working on. But so you, you can, can export keywords, them as you can, they are. You can you can mark them to be picks. You can mark them to be rejected. You can keyword. You can do a lot of things. Uh, you can create uh, smart previews, and then you can do full full work on them uh, okay. anywhere. Uh, but okay. But kind of that's very helpful. Kind of yes, and kind of okay. no. You can't print okay, them. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, uh, Lawrence Dennis. So, when you talk about uh, reformatting your SD card, is that just a way to bulk erase all the pictures rather than do it individually or doing it from the computer? Yes. So, every time you put the card in the camera, you should reformat it. You don't want to delete pictures. You, you reformat it as long as you, you've already downloaded those. Yes. So, through the camera, reformat. Lauren. Yes. This is Jean. Um, I just looked through Lightroom and it looks like I have two catalogs. Okay. Um, how do I tell what's in which catalog? Well, you just have to look at them and decide which one you want to be the main catalog. My recommendation would be, uh, my recommendation would be create a new catalog and name it <laughs> master catalog, whatever you want to name it. My catalog, something that you know that's the, the main one and then import the other two catalogs into that one and then that way you know everything is in one one spot okay because every time when i click on one of the catalogs and i say open it disappears mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't really open and I don't yeah know that's, a, that's another you know uh that's a preference setting you can tell it to always open the last one you opened uh so the safest way is, is just to click on the catalog that says master catalog and then you know you've already got it. Okay, thank you. Yep. So somebody said, can you talk about insurance? I pay thousands of dollars for insurance. What kind of insurance are we talking about? I, I, I'm not sure. 
as related to photos. Um, okay, any other questions online here? Hi, Lauren, regarding that insurance question? Yes. Uh, it's it, glad you mentioned that because that's one of my topics that I'm working on now. Um, I will, I'm looking to insure all of my camera equipment for loss, damage, theft. Do you have any recommendations on a company to pursue? Um, a, a couple things. You, you, you can get an inland marine rider on your homeowner's insurance. Sometimes that's the cheapest. So whoever, whoever you have your insurance through, ask them for, you know, tell them what you're doing. Um, if you're a member of PPA, uh, they have $15,000 worth of insurance that's part of the uh, membership, which sounds great. The only problem with that is it's based on the value of your equipment, not replacement value. So if you mm -hmm. bought a lens for $200 two years ago, or for $2,000 two years ago, it's not worth $2,000 today. It might be worth $500 today. So they'd only give you $500 for that lens in a year. So you get some, but you know, no, not enough. Uh, they do have an upgrade to their program, which seems to be about as inexpensive as anybody that is full replacement value. And it depends on how, what the value, total value of your equipment is, how much that costs. Uh, so ppa.com. Uh, is anybody using Liberty, uh, Liberty Mutual? I, ha I know someone who is, and he had said that it's replacement value, regardless of what happens to the equipment, you pay a percentage of the total value that you are insuring. Um, so he says he pays a couple of hundred dollars twice a year. And he, he thought he was insured for about 20,000. Anybody in the group use them? I used my regular insurance, which is USAA. And okay. I had a lens break one time on a trip and they gave me the full price of the lens so that I could rebuy it. Okay. So they, they were really good, but I have my regular insurance through them. So it's called a personal rider. Mm -hmm. I, I think personal it's a personal rider. rider. Yeah. And mm. they, they insure all my camera equipment. I've been trying to get hold of my insurance company and nobody answers the phone nor or writes back if you write to them. It's really crazy. There you go. Thank you. Time for a different company. Uh, a question yeah. on like, can keywords be added to photos after they're already cataloged? Absolutely. At any point, you can keyword. Uh, you can add keywords at any time. So, is there? It, um, this is Barbara. I'm looking at the various Lightroom opportunities, and one of them is to do it on mobile. Do, do you also have it on any mobile devices, or you just use the computer? Yeah. yeah. So, if if you're just purchasing it, you probably want the classic version. Yes. Photoshop and the mobile. So, so yes, you can you can have. You, you can have photos uh, uh, synchronized between uh, the two versions. And so you look at them on one, you can make changes on the other. But one thing you can't do is keyword on classic and have it go to, to CC or keyword on CC and the keywords don't transfer back to classic. It's just okay. the way they build it. So you, you don't wanna think, you know, oh, I'll just keyword everything in CC. They're not gonna show up in classic. Lauren, you said there were occasions where you keyworded um, your photos as well as created collections. Why would you do both? In, in what instance? So I have collections based on like my, my favorite uh, uh, travel photos. So I can just do one click and up come my favorite travel photos. Or, uh, um, you know, it, it just gives you a way, an, another way to find things really quick. And so if it's, if it's my 10, you know, my, my photos of the year, I have a collection that's my favorite photos from this year. And I could do a search and, and have it pull up my pics and do a, a time-based search. Uh, uh, but, you know, when I'm, when I'm doing searches that have multiple components and I'm gonna do that frequently, then I just create a collection. So that way I can just do one click. You know, mainly the collection is for things that I would do, for searches I would do repetitively. Okay, thank you. Yep. Lauren, 
Has anybody used Dark Table? Never heard of it. Lauren, I have a yes. question getting back to the um, combining uh, the many Lightroom catalogs that I have in all kinds of locations uh -huh. into one. Um, what's the process for doing that? And does it take a long time to, uh, to do the transfer into one master catalog? No, it won't take long. So you just uh, up under the, I believe it's the edit, and I hate saying things when I'm not looking at Lightroom, the edit menu and import catalog. It might okay. be file. It's either file or edit. One of those two. And Import the catalog, and you just find the other catalog and tell it to bring everything over. And it depends how many photos are there, how long it takes, and how fast your computer is. But you know, it's, it's minutes, and, not hours. So. And the Lightroom catalogs are identified by the extension LRCAT, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, I had a question about uh, other files from like Photoshop and the sidecar files. What do you do to protect them? Uh, uh, Say that again. Uh, if you work in Photoshop and you've got uh, Photoshop PSD files and things like that, how, what, what's your strategy for backing up that all that? Well, they're they're I bring them back into my Lightroom catalog, and then they're also stored on my uh, external hard drive. So they are. It, it doesn't matter what format they are. It, it, you know, I'm, I'm still able to to find them quickly, and and they're stored in the same place and backed up the same way. That makes sense. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah. This is Larissa. I, I have a question for everyone. I wonder if have anyone else uh, uses PaintShop Pro, not Lightroom or Photoshop. I guess no one. No. Nope. I was just curious because I, at some point, I just made this decision to uh, use a PaintShop Pro because I didn't like the subscription model for. Or yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the downside is they, they got me for life. So, but they update it constantly. And you know, for me, it's the value is there. So Lauren, for, for those of us who may be new users, I just looked up the Lightroom is the one that they call Lightroom photography plan for individuals and it's $9.99 a month. Correct. And it says on your desktop and mobile. Correct. And it will include Photoshop. Yeah. Yes. Right. Even though I already have Photoshop, but I, that's a separate thing. But I can use th this is what I want for the indi indexing and, and uh, database management. But what you have is an old version of Photoshop. Right. If you have a standalone. Yeah. yeah it was, has new things that will wow and amaze you. Great. Thank <laughs> you so much. Sure. So, Lauren, I have a question. I have a lot of photos on my computer. And if you want to get them over to your external hard drives, you want to get them off your computer because it just hogs all the space. Right. What is the best way to do all of that? Drag and have drop you, them all? Have you imported them into Lightroom yet? Um, some I have, not all. Uh, that's bad. <laughs> um, the, that's bad. You, the, <laughs> you want to do it through Lightroom. So the folders area of Lightroom in the library, you would do all the, the dropping and dragging there. And, it, and it's purely a drop and drag, and depending how many you have, how long it'll take. Uh, and the reason you do that, then, then Lightroom, Lightroom will know that you moved them and it will know where you moved them to. If you just drag and drop them without doing it in Lightroom, uh, Lightroom will be all confused and, and cry and, and make sad faces and put exclamation marks actually up on your photos and you have to then tell it where, where they are. So, so do the drag and drop through the folders area in the library. Okay. Should add, Lauren, that you can also, from Lightroom, move the files physically to another place. Yeah, that's what I mean. You're, you're physically moving them from your, from your. Okay, so go, you go from iPhoto to Lightroom. Lightroom. No, okay. iPhoto is a different ball game. You've got to export them out of iPhoto. Okay. You, because that is a proprietary format that they've created in in photo or iPhoto. Yeah, that's where you a lot have of mine. So them out of iPhoto first, then import them into Lightroom. So export them to a hard drive and then import to yes. Two steps. So when when you export them, export them to your external hard drive. Okay. And get rid of iPhoto. 
Warren? Yes. Um, uh, my, the process that I follow is uh, I copy my photos from the SD card onto my external drive. Then I use Adobe Bridge to rename them. And then I import them into Lightroom using the new name. Is there a way to batch rename photos in Lightroom? Because I know that if you change the name of a uh, file on the hard drive, uh, but you don't do it through Lightroom, it's going to mess it up mess up the reference in a catalog. Uh, so is there a way to batch rename uh, photos through Lightroom? Yeah, yes. So just in the, in the, yeah. So you can do all that in one step instead of three steps, Matthew. You just, when you, when in, rather than import them and drag them to your hard drive, you do it in Lightroom. When you import, it will copy them to your hard drive. And at that point, you can tell it to rename the files as you import them. Okay, I'll check into that. Thank you. Yes. Other questions? I have one more question. Can you import directly from your phone to Lightroom if you took pictures on your phone as well? To the classic? Uh, no. No. You may be able to attach your phone to a computer. Yeah, yeah. If you. No, I uh, I have the Lightroom mobile on my iPhone and it can do auto imports. On mobile, right but classic. not classic. Yeah. So then how do you oh, get it? It goes right into my Lightroom classic. It does. Yes, yeah, so everything synchronizes and then it pops into Lightroom classic for me. Do you have to set up a, a synchronized folder in classic? Because not everything in classic, or er, in, in CC, not everything in CC synchronizes automatically to classic. Right. There's yeah. There's a setting in there. The preferences as to when it pulls all the mobile photos in. Where do you want it to go? Do you want it to keep the same date folder structure? Do you want them all to go to one folder? It gives you the options, and then okay. it just dumps it right. there when everything is online. Right. So so I don't think the the default. I think that's not the default setting. So you have to tell it that you also want them to go to to classic when you pull them into CC. Yes. But then you need to go into classic and keyword. Don't keyword them in CC. Or you'll do it twice. Other questions? OK. Well, well thank, thank you. Everybody. you. Everybody, and we'll, we'll catch you next time. Thanks a bunch. Thanks, thank, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank, Thank you. Lauren.